Okay, so I'll start with my session, and it's about simplifying payments. I'd like to show you how we are able to integrate XRPL into existing financial accounting systems. First, I'm going to start um, with showing you a bit um, how it works today, how users in accounting and small and medium enterprises have to work, followed by a few words about ISO 2022 migration, which occurs worldwide, um, afterwards, I show a tiny demo of my solution and yeah, do a short summary. Today's life in accounting, it can get complicated for users because small and medium enterprises often don't have the big solution which just solves everything. Um, I'm thinking about several obstacles they discover. For example, if they like to send payments at night, during weekends or on holidays, that's often not even possible. Sometimes it's possible for an extra fee, but it's also possible that they just have to wait. It's also quite an obstacle because some banks are just adjusting the data you send them. For example, in Switzerland, if you're sending your bank a payment instruction to send the payment on a holiday, they just adjust the payment date to another date. That brings an imbalance between your accounting software, what you believed you sent them, and the reality what your bank really did. Another pain part is international payments, as you can imagine. The exchange rate a bank applies aren't known before. That means, as, an, as a user in accounting, you prepare the payments in your software, you export them, you send the bank the files, and now you have to wait with your process. Because you pr for your process to continue in accounting, you need to know which exchange rates you need to apply to your booking. And yeah, that takes some hours for a bank, maybe some days, some days, you don't know. That means your process in accounting is interrupted until you get the response from your bank. The biggest part, in my opinion, is the lack of bank integration. Sometimes it's not even possible to integrate your existing software with banking infrastructure. The hint here is open banking. That means as a user, you have to import and export files from your accounting software. You have to log in to your online banking. You have to upload files. You have to await the process. It's all, all thing, all everything is quite, it's not that easy as it should be. If you think about owning multiple bank connections or multiple bank accounts, it gets even worse. So on all, the user's daily business in accounting can get complicated in payments. The import and export got a bit easier in the last years because the financial world is migrating to ESO 2022. For those who don't, who don't know, it's an international uh, scheme for transmitting financial data to other institutions. Before we had proprietary implementation of such protocols and we're moving now to a global standard. And that's a process which is worldwide currently in process around different areas. What does it mean for accounting software? In accounting software, we had to implement before several formats. In Swiss, Switzerland, for example, we have two big banks, for example. One is the UBS, you maybe know, and another one is the Post Finance, which is a uh, subsidiary by the Swiss Postal Service. These two, two corporations had different file formats. And for us as software developer, that means we had to, to implement both standards, which wasn't really, really cool. And yeah, now with implementing ESO 2022, that led to that for sending payments, we can implement the PEN 001 format from the ESO standard. And for receiving payments in accounting, we can just implement another one. Now let's switch to my demo. In my demo, um, here we assume we are in a payment software. It's just a simple one, which offers basically foreign currency support 
and it doesn't integrate any cryptocurrency functionality at all. For my example, I assume we are in the accounting software of John McClain. You maybe know John McClain from the Die Hard movies. He's going to receive a lot of bills because it just destroys a lot of things. And therefore, all has to be as easy as possible. Here we have prepared two payments. One payment is um, of five Swiss francs and one is 10 XRP. As a user, I can just export these files into an ISO format. And traditionally, I would now just upload the, these exported files to my bank and wait for the processing. But instead, I can run my new component. This new component basically takes the file format in the ISO 1001 standard, transforms the payment instructions into cryptocurrency payments and sends them directly to the receiver. This seems to have worked here. We can check this in the online explorer. And yeah, we see two payments here. The one is 10 XRP, the first payment. And the second one is about around 6 XRP, which are the five Swiss francs transformed with an imaginary exchange rate. Now we are switching the roles. We are switching from the creditor part into the debtor part. Let's imagine we are now in the accounting software of myself, of Freetom. Here we have one bill I sent to John McLean and I'm expecting a payment of five Swiss francs. Traditionally, I would again log into my online bank, look for the received payments and download them in the ISO 2022 format. But with, with, no, with my no new component, uh, we are able to just fetch these online payments um, from the ledger and transform them into regular ISO 2022 format. And that seemed to work. It creates a special file which we are able to import within the already known process for the user. And just can show, okay, we have received five Swiss francs again, and we can continue in my regular use process. That means, all in all, we can, from a sender side, send payments within our noun process over the XRP ledger, and as a receiver, we can just use the ledger to receive all these payments and transform them into a format which my accounting software already understands. So that brings us a lot of new advantages, in my opinion. I talked about night, weekend and holiday processing. Um, that problem doesn't exist anymore because we are now able to just send payments in real time, every day and every night. That leads to more automatization in the accounting software and therefore to less user errors. I also talked about international payments, the unknown exchange rates, they become known because we can show the user which exchange rate the software likes to apply. That means the user process isn't interrupted anymore. The user doesn't have to wait until his bank processes something or tells him something. And of course, it doesn't matter if he's sending a domestically or internationally payment. It just takes a few seconds. It's also quite integrated into his own his existing processes, as I mentioned. We don't need to introduce something completely new to the user. He can just use his software he uses for his processes. I also talked about multiple accounts. Yeah, it doesn't matter because if we, if we use one wallet or 10 wallets, it's just software, it's okay for us. We can even um, create new possibilities, more, more new opportunities. We can, for example, check the balance in advance. Today, the user creates his payments, sends them to his banks, so only to see that the bank says, hey, your balance is too low, you cannot process this file. We can that show directly before sending the payments. 
We could also think about multi-signing for higher payments. That would be possible. Or we could improve fraud prevention. For example, if we just check the sending or receiving addresses before even considering sending a payment. All in all, it means we are able to simplify the user payments process in this accounting software. So that was it, and I thank you for your attention. And if you have any input or feedback or interested, just write me on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>